Does this sound familiar? You have to access a machine or plant remotely via the internet. However, the machine is part of a corporate network that outside users can't simply access. In order to still be able to perform remote maintenance, you need a secure connection. In the next few minutes, I will show you how easy secure remote access can be. I use Cinema Remote Connect, our management platform for VPN connections. Cinema Remote Connect is a server application. It manages VPN tunnel connections and access rights between the control center, the service technicians, and the installed machines or plants. Communication between the participants is protocol independent and IP based. The remote machine and the service technicians first establish a connection to a Cinema Remote Connect server independently of each other. There, the participants are identified by certificate and only then does the server establish the connection between the machine and the technician. I will now show you how quickly and easily you can configure and commission the Cinema Remote Connect server in a virtual machine. Alternatively, you can install the software in a cloud environment. Let's now start with the installation of the Cinema Remote Connect server. I use a PC with an internet connection and insert the Cinema Remote Connect server CD. Then I create a new virtual machine, VM for short. In the virtual machine wizard, I select install from disk. The virtual machine is created using all the information stored in the image on the CD. For example, the operating system and Cinema Remote Connect software. Alternatively, instead of using a VM, you can boot your PC directly from the CD. Then the operating system, including Cinema Remote Connect, will be installed directly on the PC. Please note that in this case, your PC's hard drive will be overwritten with the new operating system. For my VM, I choose Linux with the version Ubuntu 64-bit as operating system and assign the name Cinema RC Tutorial VM to the virtual machine. Now I can specify the folder for the VM. Then I specify the size of the virtual hard drive. The size should be at least 20 gigabytes. Now the virtual machine is created. In the next step, I have to configure the memory for my VM. I open the virtual machine settings and select 2 GB. This is the minimum I recommend. I change the network adapter to bridged. This allows the Cinema Remote Connect VM to use the existing network interface with internet access. Now I start the virtual machine and configure the Cinema Remote Connect server. Next, I select Install Cinema Remote Connect Server. I accept the general terms and conditions and select Single Tenant. Now, I have to select whether the server should have a static or a dynamic IP address. A dynamic IP address is recommended for installation in a cloud environment. I select a static IP address because I'm installing my system in a VM. I then select a network interface. Next, I assign the static IP address for the Cinema Remote Connected server as well as the network mask and gateway addresses. You can get this information from your network administrator. The server is now successfully installed and initialized. I click OK and the system reboots. Now I can access the web-based management of the Cinema Remote Connect server via a browser using the IP address displayed. I start the browser and navigate to my IP address. Many browsers display a warning at this point that the connection is not secure, but you can still continue with this process step. The message will disappear as soon as the web server certificate has been imported to the browser. However, importing the server certificate is optional and has no effect on the functionality. You can find information about the settings in the manual.
Following installation, it is necessary to log in once with the username admin and the password admin. For security reasons, you must then create a new user and a new secure password. Please use upper and lowercase, special characters, and numbers for a secure password. The next step is to transfer the date and time from the PC to the Cinema Remote Connect server. Later, you should also enter an NTP server. The correct time setting for the clients and server is very important because the generated certificates are valid for a limited time and could be rendered invalid if the time is incorrect. Now you can check the network settings already made. Since your server is connected to the internet via a stationary router, the public WAN IP address must be entered here, via which the router can be reached from the internet. In the next tab, you can enter a DNS hostname. The Cinema Remote Connect server can then be reached via this name using name resolution. This is helpful if the IP address of the server is not a public static address. You usually get the name from your IT administrator. For my project, I use cinemarcserver.dyndns.org. A DNS server must be entered to activate the licenses. This you can also get from your IT administrator or you can use a public DNS server. The final step is to configure the port settings. The port for HTTPS access to the server website and the fallback port for the certificates are suggested by default. To establish the VPN tunnel, both the UDP or TCP port can be used. All ports can also be changed. Please clarify with your admin whether the ports are still available in your company and can be used. In order for the server to be accessible from the internet, your admin must configure the corresponding port forwarding, including firewall activation and the internet router. Now the web-based management of the Cinema Remote Connect server can be accessed via the internet using a public static IP address or optional DNS name. This completes the configuration of the Cinema Remote Connect server. You can see how fast and easy it is to install and configure the Cinema Remote Connect server in a virtual machine. You can now use the system on this basis. For example, you can add devices and clients and set up your remote connections.